Good evening. It's Wednesday night, April the 27th, and I'm Brother Steve, pastor of the First Baptist Church, Salisbury, Indiana. And for some time now, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, we'll be doing a running study of the New Testament. I'm just going to pick right up where we left off. We're in the study of the book of the Revelation, and we've been looking just very simple at the very clear teaching of the book. We're not trying to be overly dramatic nor uh, go carried away with it, but just to, to see the very clear outline that the Bible gives us of tomorrow. In chapter 8 closed, we were challenged with a loud voice from the heaven saying, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Judgment had been coming, but he says more is to come, and it's not good. We've already been through the uh, scroll judgments. Now we're at the uh, fifth angel about to sound with the trumpet judgments. Notice chapter 9 begins, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from the heavens to the earth. And to, him, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the stars, the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, skip down to verse 11 and 12, and we'll pick up more in our understanding of this. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abagdon. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Now, I want to encourage you to understand that God can use anything he chooses to help carry out his judgment. God is sovereign. And in his providential care for us, he can use anything he wants to. And as sovereign God, he can use anything he wants to to bring judgment upon the earth. And we need to understand that Satan is indeed a very real leader. He said, I saw a star fall from heaven. This is consistent with the rest of the biblical teachings of the origin of the enemy. He's called Apollyon or Abagdon. He's called the Satan. He's called the enemy. But Satan is the ruler and leader of this horrible bottomless pit. He is their leader. Understand that he fell from heaven. And understand that he fights humanity. Now, did you see verse 11 and 12? Now, notice the interesting thing about verse 11 it reminds us that he has this name and he has the key. He's the angel. He's the messenger of the bottomless pit. Then we're told that one woe is past, two more are coming. We see a picture of Satan as the leader of the enemy. We see that Satan is uh, the one who fell from heaven and he's the one who fights humanity. He has no good intentions for any member of Adam's race because they remind him of the love of Jesus. Folks, he hates anything that points people to Jesus. He hates the image of God that is seized in humanity. He's not the equal of Jesus on the negative side of the spectrum, but he is a fallen angel who is their leader. And he is to be admonished in the name of Jesus, but he is also to be understood to be the leader of the enemy. He is the leader of the opposition. And when God chooses, he can use even the horribleness of demonic activity and of fallen angels for his own judgments. Now notice what happens. They have to realize that Satan is their leader, but pick up with me if you would at verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given great power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And they commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the field, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So to them was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days, men will seek death and shall not find it. They shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts were like the horses prepared for battle. And their heads were on them crowns like gold, and their faces were the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sounds of their wing was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. And power was to hurt men five months. Honest story. Now, I, I wear a silicon wedding band because... Uh, I got stung by a bee on my finger right above my gold wedding band. And as I had an allergic reaction to the multiple bee stings, I tried to get that ring off and 
I took some Benadryl and I put aloe and ice and cold water on it. And I called a nurse and I said, what am I going to do? And I started to get a hacksaw and start to cut that. And she said, do not cut that ring off. Just keep working it, working it, working it. And the pain, when I shifted the ring to where the stings were, some of the worst I've ever had. It just lasted about eight or 10 minutes all total time I was able to get the ring off and just kind of suffer through that moment. And I guess emotionally, I just don't want to put that metal ring back on my finger. It's kind of lopsided. My finger doesn't fit right anymore. So I wear this uh, silicon ring just to uh, kind of emotionally deal with the fact I want the world to know I'm happily married, but I can't get that metal around my finger right now. That hurt just for a few minutes. And when that ring got up on that stinger, it hurt like nothing imaginable. Can you imagine being tormented for five months? You see, suffering is the legacy of those who follow the enemy and those who don't have the name of God on their forehead. Now notice these horrible, horrible locusts, these stingers. They had the power of scorpions. The, the, The idea that they should come and inflict pain but not kill. Dave Jeremiah has an interesting article that he argues that during this time, the Bible says men will not be able to commit suicide. He believes it very strongly based on verse 6 that they will seek death and not find it. They will desire to die. They will, they will attempt suicide, but death will flee from them. And the shape of these locusts is that, that this vicious demonstration of, of uh, animals and different peri- How big are they? How powerful are they? How much noise they make? Just horrific. But their purpose is simple, to torment and to terrify. You see, God can use the enemy. God can use demons to carry out his judgment. They follow Satan. They have a legacy of torment. Pastor, why is it five months? Well, the Bible says it's five months. Can you imagine the hideousness of that pain and unlimitedness of that pain and the torment for months simply because you were stung by this locust scorpion animal from the very pits of hell. That's why I don't want to follow Satan. That's why I don't want to be around when the earth is judged. That's why I'm glad to know I'm following Jesus. God uses not just demons to carry out his judgment, but God can use the enemy's armies to carry out judgment as well. Pick up with me at verse 13. The sixth angel sounds, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altars, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which had prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. For the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat upon them having breastplates of fire and of Japheth and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as heads of lions and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And these three was the third part. I'm sorry, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their powers in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like in a serpent which had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils or idols or gold or silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. I want you to understand that God can use demons, as we said, verses 1 through 12, to carry out his judgment. God can use an army to carry out his judgment. You know, God directs their destiny. God determines uh, what they destroy. God is ultimately in charge. Now, there's been all kinds of excitement over this 200,000, thousand is 200 million army. A lot of people say, well, are there even 200 million horses in the world? I don't know, but the number of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. I remember as a young man being told that China had an army and claimed to have 200 million soldiers and they, they would have horses and Somebody recently has said the reason that the people are riding horses in Revelation is gas is too expensive. And I, I don't believe that for a minute, but I will tell you that this battle is unimaginable. But God will determine their destruction. God's judgment is a destruction of man's sinfulness, and it is a demonstration of God's sovereignty. Demons from the abyss, the armies from the east, they come together 
to carry out the judgments of God. But notice how tragic it is. Verses 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. I don't know how to explain this, Man must repent of his idolatry and man must repent of his immorality. But in verse 20, they just refuse to repent of their idolatry. They're worshiping devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood. And and these idols can't see nor hear nor walk, but they're, they're devoting themselves to them in the midst of the judgment of God, the horror being unleashed on the planet. They refuse to repent of their idolatry. Sadly, they also refuse to repent of their murders, their sorceries, nor their fornications, nor their thefts. It's not only idolatry, but it's immorality. I hear people say, well, pastor, if God would just send me a sign, if I, if I could just see God do something to prove that the Bible's real, to prove that he's the only way, I might, I might repent. And here in Revelation 9, these guys watch the earth go through the most unimaginable pain, the torture of, of, of literally millions of people, the, the horror of the planet going through this terrible time, and yet the Bible says they repented not. Friend, you need to repent now. With repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus, you need to come to saving faith tonight. You need to recognize that You can't save yourself. Your sin problem is so real that Jesus went to the cross and died for you. He loves you so much that he made a way for you to escape all this. He went to the cross and he died for you. Your sin put him there. The wages of your sin was death and he died a death for you. Before it's too late, why not turn to him? Why not right now say, Lord, I know I'm sorry. I know I'm a sinner. And I I right now just beg that you'd forgive me and cleanse me. And I repent of my sin. I turn from my sin. I trust Jesus to save me. And I want to be born again tonight. Lord, Lord, would you right now speak to my heart? Oh, go to our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. There's there's a link at the top to the gospel. And and there's a couple pages there with several key Bible verses to help you see your need for a Savior and how you can pray to receive him right now. Repent of your sin right now. God has already done all he needs to do for you to be saved. Don't wait. Because in the midst of this horror, those not killed by these plagues still repent it not. What a terrible, terrible reality. Call on the Lord tonight. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Please go to our website. Come to Jesus. Father, I pray that you'd speak to each heart, that you would do the work in them that only you can do. Draw them to you. Help them to see their need for repentance. Help them to turn from their sin and turn towards the Savior. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you.